It's got to be enough. Yeah, exactly. It's the fridge or the coffee maker. Either the fridge way, is, is humming. Is it the fridge? That's okay. That's I can, a fridge. No, no, I, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I can do it. I can eliminate it 90% of the time anyways. No, no, that's it was that one it's episode. It's not a coffee maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> so, somebody will bitch about it. <laughs> somebody will. We got a message saying, I'm a sound engineer. You need help. I was like, like, thank you. That's, that's, I, like, I also it. am not a sound engineer, so I certainly do. You know have someone uh, saying, she, oh, wait, I have to respond, by the way. She says she wants to uh, translate all the podcasts in French and everything. And she's like, but so, I, uh, but she's like, I can't do the, I, I would like to do uh, a podcast in French explaining what you explain. I was like, oh, I don't that. slippery. But she, yeah, exactly. But she was like, uh, but I don't have your fancy setup. I don't have any money, so I don't expect much. I was like, all fancy setup does not cost no. shit. And I'll be honest, this costs almost no money. I think, no joke, 200 bucks, not counting the old phones. Everything yeah, but that, those are all Google. Yeah, yeah. But, pixels, but I mean, yeah. but I mean, you can also do everything. You would be ninety nine percent, ninety five percent the quality that we'd have here with two old phones and those fifty dollar mics and none of the yeah. mics are two. Yeah. So like you're talking a hundred bucks and you can be up and moving. You just got to want it. You can do one <laughs> one day. We'll do a podcast on making every a time podcast. and every time someone says something about the sound quality or setups or anything. I'm like, first off, you know the amount of fucking Skype podcasts that are out that there that is true that is or anything i've done, that's I've going been, on I've done a few listen the sound yeah. quality on this is a hundred times better than yeah. anything with skype ever and two i don't really care you you can hear it you're fine <laughs> but i don't even know what they said because i've listened to it i don't know yeah it's really okay not joe rogan but we don't have jamie in the back uh yeah. I, you know, like, it's uh, wild yeah but i think it is um <clears throat> But it is interesting, uh, the, the setup, I, I see people with huge setups that don't sound much better. But my favorite yeah. thing, I remember when uh, we were at Juggernaut Training System, they finally started launching their podcast with Chad Wesley Smith and them. And for mm, probably the first six months, it wasn't recorded with an MP3 recorder. It was recorded with a cell phone sitting on the table. Oh. And they yeah. built a pretty damn large audience off of that and then got some like, Slightly better equipment $50 and slightly better <laughs> until yeah. until it was passable. And I was like, we're well past the passable point. And oh, we'll yes. tie a bunch yeah. of resources exactly. into that yeah. when it's time. But now is not the time. <laughs> I, I'm not, yeah, maybe. When we build a podcast in we get the studio room in set Barcelona, up, maybe. set up for that. But, but yeah, but then we're going to have to be stuck in front of the microphone. It's all about everything. inputs, like, yeah. Because I, I see, like, at Joe Rogan, like, how he has to move the microphone to his yeah. mouth all the time. That would... That, yeah. No, I think no, I'm not doing that one. The way I like every, any system that we do is there's a measure of taking the good with the bad. Because you try to do away with all the bad, you got to put in a fuckload of extra work. Yeah, in exa everything. Exactly. No, because like they don't even need the the, the ear stuff, by the yeah. way. It, it, they just do it to hear themselves so that they're not distracted. So you know, well, and like and so you know you're yeah. not drifting away. Right. That, so suddenly you have to keep the microphone next to you and you need the... Uh, the earpods just to know that you're not drifting away. Yeah. yeah, like it's not... And if you've been watching for long yeah. enough, we are way too pretty to be covering up with microphones. Exactly. That's why we keep and them down here. Like the whole, like, you know, there's something about Mary's brother. <laughs> Julian, like, and, yeah, and uh, Julian didn't get head tattoos so that he can cover him up with giant fucking earmuffs. Exactly. <laughs> the earmuffs, the camera, does it? No, no. So that's our... Bitch about why the sound's not awesome. And we also record in a giant open room and it is awesome. We You're not it. awesome. We That's enjoy the it. <laughs> exactly. But uh but anyway, so no hard feelings there. We're just fucking around. But we want to dive into a <laughs> I always have to be the nice one. Yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is, he's he's the nice one now. Is we've taken this objectives versus constraints thing that we established many weeks back. Um, and now we've kind of been hitting that point along each step of the way now. Yes. With everything else you've been doing, it's coming yeah. up now back. Objectives versus constraints. Because Were this is wrong? our Were biggest right? problem that we see in explaining what we talk about through the strongfic community is that is the objective based mentality and how much it's affecting you know what surprised me the most how much it affects the medical world. Yeah. Even at a high level. Yeah. Because now the more I start to study the high level stuff, the more I'm like, but that's not how this works. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a lack so I think Maybe it's an academic stuff because no one, there's no 
other system more built on objective than the academic world. Yeah. You have to give a paper, you have to do this, you have to do that. You get and a, I think you he has, submit it, you get a score, yeah, you get a grade. Exactly, and right. good, and this one means And we bad. know the academic law don't work in yeah. the academic world, right? And I think they, uh, they so far removed of the practical application because of that. So I think there is a tremendous flaw in even a high level of the medical world because of that, because of the objective mindset. Yeah. And we had a conversation on strong community about brain serotonin that I think uh, underlines exactly the problem. Yeah. I think there's a fundamental problem is how people see brain serotonin and what it means from an objective versus constraint perspective. So that's what we're going to talk about today, brain serotonin. Yeah. What is brain serotonin, Julian? Right, okay, so because let's start with that. Right? there's regular serotonin, right. and then there's so, brain yeah, let's serotonin. Start with that. There's two types of serotonin. There's the serotonin produced in the body and the one produced in the brain. The reason they are, uh, so 95% of the serotonin is produced in the gut, in the enteric nervous system that is its own set of neurons. The reason that serotonin cannot go to the brain is because it cannot pass the blood-brain barrier. Yeah. Right, so that means that the brain needs to produce its own serotonin. So what does it in the brain is a node, a part of the brain called the RAF node that is uh, related to the circadian rhythms. That's the part of the brain where the circadian rhythm takes place. Okay. That's where brain serotonin is being produced. So that's what serotonin is. If you Google serot brain serotonin, what you will see mostly from very interesting website, is that it's a molecule of happiness. You will see serotonin equals happiness. Serotonin, the happy chemical. There's, there's all this There's stuff. a molecule of happiness. There's yeah. a, I've seen a cool uh, design and to pose. Yeah. Now, now, in these, some of these things that I, we were looking up the, the other day, it was like, it was very interesting too, the words that they were using, yes. because there's always this semantics argument that right. we always yeah. hate. When, but like we talked about with this, um, Convergent mindset when things become objective. That's based, important. Right. Let's talk about words that. fucking all of a sudden really matter. So much. Everything's got to be reduced down. Exactly. Well, so let's talk about that because that's a very important problem that's going to define the whole podcast. Is an objective mindset. So, what are we talk about objective versus constraints? The podcast we did that comes out of um, the novelty search from artificial intelligence. And we talked about a book that is called Why Greatness Cannot Be Planned that you should all read. It's, it's actually very easy to read and it's from computer science and it's a very, very interesting idea that was showing that a search based on objective always fails. Yeah. Uh, it has to be based on constraints, not objectives. Go back to the podcast. And what happens when you have an objective-based search is you end up with a convergent mindset, which means it has to narrow down to one cause at the end. It's, it always works like that. It's a reductionist, reductionist mentality yeah. where you start with a big base and then every time you're one step closer to the truth, whatever the fuck that means, mm -hmm. you're doing good. So it's a good versus bad mentality where the constraint base is not, is not good and bad. It's what works, what it's better or worse, you know. Yeah. Right, one step closer or not. Whereas objective mindset, there's one step closer is good, one step further is bad. The problem is nothing is life is a linear thing. Sometimes you have to take a left before you can. It doesn't work like that. And so objective uh, based search always end up in a dead end because it's a reductionist mindset that always end up with an oversimplification of a problem that is more complex than we're willing to acknowledge. Yeah. And that leads you into a dead end, dead end every single time. In this case too, what they were using, we reduced the terminology all the way down right. to where they would say- Exactly, oversimplification. They would say that the serotonin has been linked with happiness or linked and right. these things. So they, they, they indicate a relationship, but the scope of the entire thing implies causation. Exactly. I'm like, Instead what? of correlation. Yeah, I'm exactly. Like, I'm, like, I'm like, but you're, right. you're using exactly. a word that you have to fucking use. This says they are related. Right. That's all they're saying. That's all they. they and, 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 that's and, all they should say. Yes. But the way they're phrasing it implies yeah. causation, and Be, that's where the problem starts. And because then the, the the next, frankly, human logical step is well, that, yeah. Well, then let how me, do I get more this. brain serotonin? Exactly. Right. Because that's so. The problem is uh, what we talked about: the good hearts law in, of economics. When a measure measure becomes a target, it ceases to be good measure. The way they're looking at brain serotonin, it's a measure of dominance to a large degree, and I explain what I mean by that. But if you make it a target, then it's not a measure of dominance. You're just gaming the system. Mm -hmm. This is like the bonus for the company, 
Well, what we yeah. talked about in a podcast, where suddenly you get a great bonus, but it doesn't benefit the company. Yeah. Guess what? You're going to kill the host. It doesn't work like that. That's objective-based stuff. It doesn't work. So, the, but that's something you see in the medical world. And why does it matter? Because that reductionist mentality has led us to use. <laughs> we like words, and the medical world love words. But the problem is, so does, for example, the pharmaceutical world. And what they've done with that, that objective-based search is they've gamed the system. Mm -hmm. For example, what do I mean by that? They say antidepressants. Right. That is not fucking true. Like the, it's serotonin-based, a lot yeah. of them. Uh, let's say Prozac, serotonin-based, uh, is an antidepressant. That's not true. It's a less depressant. Like we need to establish yeah. that from the beginning. Yeah, it just, it like just... they're fucking lying to you. See, but that's how, that's how the problem happens, is they own you by using words that imply things that are just plain not true. Well, and what if taking your taking bad and turning it into less bad is going to feel relatively good. It's going to feel awesome, good. you mean. But right? relief is not happiness. Yes. So if I bang my head against the wall real hard for five minutes and I stop, I'm going to be very happy that I stopped. I'm going to feel awesome. Yeah. Why? Because I have a wave of relief coming through me. That's not happiness. Well, I mean, at that moment it is, but that's what they're selling you, yeah. is that it doesn't hurt as bad, that's happiness. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> no. No, 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 that's, that's, not, that's not true. But, so let's talk about antidepressant for a second. Yeah. There's a very good podcast on Jorgen with that dude, that English journalist, the one that sounds like Draco Malfoy from oh. Harry Potter, that British dude, like uh, slightly feminine. Awesome dude. He talks about... Um, Wars, it's been everywhere. It sounds like Draco Malfoy. I have no yeah. idea. Is it recent? Last year, two years? Oh, a year or two? that's too far out for me to remember. I, I'll, I'll send it to you. That's like they, 700 so Rogan episodes. Yes, that, that is true as well. <laughs> um, but it's, it's so good because he goes into um, the problem with drugs and then how to treat it, so socialization, everything. But then he goes into antidepressants. So uh, I found it interesting because that's a feel, obviously. I'm mm -hmm. very close to it. So, for example, there's a... Uh, the numbers were, were showing you that people are taking antidepressants, 80 whatever percent of people say they're still depressed. They still feel like shit, they're just not as bad. They went from a 10 to an eight. Yeah. So literally there's a number for it because there's a graph, a questionnaire that they give you for depression that is score over 52. And taking, um, taking those antidepressants, I see make you go up four points on the scale or some shit like that. On a scale of one to 52? Yeah. Whereas uh, it was either three or four. Mm -hmm. That's it. But like a, a full week of good sleep was you were going up by like five or six. Yeah. It's the most stupid thing ever. It's, that, it's a it's fucking that, lie. It's that treating symptoms thing that you see all the but time. But they're not even... No, you know what it reminds me is the cleaning stuff what you were talking about, the addiction clinic with oh, a 4% yeah. success rate. Yeah. That's what this is. People that go off... By the way, when people start on antidepressant, how long do they stay on it? What happens when they come off? How yeah. many of them cannot stay off depression without being on the pill. Yeah. Can we talk about all this? Like, because those well, are then, not antidepressants. So they are less depressed. Let's talk a little bit about what that mechanism can look like as that progresses, right? So someone right, is yeah. taking antidepressants, what's happening? They're being right. pacified. It's a dampening of. system. Yeah. So a lot of this, and we're going to explain how that works, but a lot of, there's a very specific uh, synthesization of brain serotonin in the brain that goes through the H, whatever, it keeps on, to the point where that particular thing is actually treated as a drug because it's a slight hypnotic stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a dampening system that the brain has, and I, we're going to explain all this, but it's a dampening system that all stops. So it makes you go from a 10 to an 8. So it makes, allows you to, it basically makes you less happy, less sad. Yeah. So if you're depressed and you have a symptom of where well, you're depressed, you're sad, you feel like shit, it's going to make you less feel like shit. Yeah. Just like you're going to, so it's, it's not going to make you stop hitting your head against the wall, but it's going to, it's going to make you hit your head on, against the wall less hard. Yeah. So therefore you'll feel better. You're still fucking hitting your head against yeah. the wall. You're just not doing it as hard as you were before. Is that progress? And I think, well, technically, yes, but why are we having this conversation? And, and, and so with defining that as kind of that generally right. that, how that's going to trend, how let, let's establish then what depression. Right. So the problem does, right now is they, they're for. saying that depression is a chemical imbalance in the brain. 
-hmm. Like it's just you're not producing enough brain serotonin. So that's the problem. So if we give you brain serotonin, it fixes depression. Whereas no, we know depression. So the more we study this, the, the more you see that depression, you know, Vegas, we talked about this many times. Mm -hmm. It's a behavioral issue. Yeah. Right. So the biggest problem with this is emotional violence, right? I have a very, very strong feeling because depression can be very strong where you're like, Ugh, but it's basically, it's not necessarily like the intensity of anxiety, yeah. but it's still a very strong feeling about what it does to your life, your self-esteem and all that stuff. Right? Because it's been a while, I want to reestablish the emotional balance thing. So emotional balance right. is that Sorry. the intensity of the emotion decides, the learning, decides rate. the learning rate. Meaning if something is like yeah, yeah, casually frustrating, you're probably not going to learn that lesson. You're not going to spend quick. that much energy on it. But the thing that makes you just lose your goddamn mind One way is another. usually a command to learn, pick this up yeah. right now. But by the way, I also works about the good stuff. Yes. If you know, you know, you feel awesome that day. You do. What the fuck did I do? And how do I do that again? Yeah. Right. That's where the addic addictive mentality comes in and all that stuff. Like, so it makes you look for patterns. What yeah. do I need to do to get that? And you're going to learn to be really good at it. Really fast. This is why addicts to score our geniuses. Yeah. The shit they'll make work in order to score is absurd. Yeah. So that, that's emotional balance. So the strength of your emotion decides your learning rate. If you use something that is a damp dampening mechanism, that means you are reducing your capacity to learn. Right, so that means that, let's say, example, you your life is not exactly what you would like to be. So you're depressed about it. Mm -hmm. You take you find a way to increase brain serotonin, pills or food, and suddenly you feel less about your life. Yeah. You feel like your life is not as bad as you thought. The problem with that is your life is still the same. Yeah. It hasn't changed. It, it is just as bad as it was yesterday. The only thing that is different is how you look at it. Is that a progress? Is that progress? It's progress if you can't change it. Yeah. But if you could actually act on it and change it for the better, then your increase in brain serotonin through means like food or pills will stop you from acting on it. Mm -hmm. Because you won't, because the emotion is not high enough. Because yeah, it's there specifically to dampen that, which is what drives... And people, and, and and people are always misunder... Yeah. It's like we talk about learning rate. Learning. It's like, I don't know, learning the, as the concept, that is what progress is. That is what yes. getting stronger yep. is. That is what all of this It's not is. good or bad. Yeah. It's better or worse. So yeah. learning is better. There's yeah. no good or bad here. There's only better. And that's what learning is. So people will say, well, yeah, but they're freaking out. They just need to lower a little bit. The second you lower a little bit, your body knows that if you do more of that, you'll, why would you not go to more? Like everybody's always like, yeah, but let's give them a little bit. And then that way it will allow, allow them to land on their feet. And from there, they'll be able to work on their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except it never fucking works. Yeah. Yeah. That's the addicts with methadone. Yeah. No, they just got high on methadone, yeah. and then it never it, the the rate is ridiculously low of success because it's, the second you open that it's Pandora's box, the second you say get a little bit of that, you'll feel better. But now go work on the stuff you don't like. Mm -hmm. Why? I can just take more of that and feel exactly. even better. Why would I not take more? Because it's an objective based mindset. And that just fucks you up. And yeah. so that's the problem is, my, and that's what we're going to talk on this podcast, is my biggest problem is they are equating brain serotonin and happiness where it's not that at all. That is not what brain serotonin is. And it's so fucking dangerous to mess with it. Yeah. And I think to take it one step further. So we've taken this from a antidepressant standpoint, right? Yeah. But that's only to understand the mechanism of depression and kind of the mechanism of brain and, and to attack the pharmaceutical yes, industry. which will yes. take every opportunity to do. Every show, single time. Yeah. They're lying to you. <laughs> and that's not conspiracy, Julian and Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. They are plain lying to you. Yeah. Antidepressants alone is not the correct term. Yeah. Go f do you know how they figure that shit out? By drowning rats. And uh, I kid you not. I kid you not. And then they were giving the uh, antidepressants to the rats, and the one that lasted the longest, that's how the shit got made. <laughs> I kid you not. Yeah. So, so you know why? Because it's a dampening mechanism. They yeah. were not freaking out as much. So that's to take that as a um, whatever. It's a, it's an external chemical that you're taking. It's going to do that, right? You're going to ingest a thing. Right. That should you be have taken to care of for thing. behavior. Right. So right? are we are we there? Yeah. On the carbs. You, you want to talk about ingestion? Okay. So how do we produce? Yeah, we're serotonin? about there. Yeah. Let's, okay. So let's talk we about. We dampen the system. We'll get into fuel and nutrition. Right. All right. So, um, like, do we? Do we go into dampening? Uh, um, 
let's explain brain serotonin, how it works first, and then we can explain the mechanism to produce it. Okay. Right. Because, for example, we saw with brain serotonin, so let's explain what brain serotonin is exactly. I think we should start with that. Um, what we saw, for example, is that in alpha males, not chimps, but macaques, I say it the French way. We say macaque, it's probably not the way I, we say I it in I saw English. it and I was like, I don't know what this word is. I think it's a monkey. Yes, it is. Okay. You know the one with the big ass teeth? Yeah, yeah. Remember uh, The Rock? When he's well, no, I Googled it. I just didn't Google how okay. to say it. Remember? Um, <laughs> it was a trap. <laughs> when um, The Rock was is in Brazil and chasing like the other dude and, and he's facing... The rundown. Yeah, yeah, The yeah, rundown, yeah, yeah. right? The and really scary fucking ones? With a face that big. And th those, yeah. yeah, anyway. No, those were <laughs> baboons, sorry. Those are not the macaque. Anyway, okay. uh, macaque are different kind of uh, monkeys. They're not. Those were baboons. They're actually worse. Anyway. Whatever. <laughs> I, I know a lot of useless shit. Um, macaque, the alpha male macaque, has twice as much serotonin as the beta males. It's been tested. It doesn't work with the female, but it works with so the So me male. standing outside says, well, you just need more serotonin. You're going right. to become an alpha male. Exactly. So they tried that. Okay. They took the... Um, yeah, and there's a problem with that mentality, and I'm going to explain that with the lobster. They took the beta... They removed the alpha male, and they tested the beta males. The second they became alpha... Then their serotonin went up. So they fought their way to dominance. Exactly. And so there's a problem with the idea of we add brain serotonin, therefore they become stuff. And this is exactly the core of the issue. Let me use the lobsters on that one. That's something Dr. Peterson, Jordan Peterson talks about all the time. A lobster, two lobsters fight. When the uh, lobster loses, he becomes a loser. He has less serotonin because they have the same nervous system, serotonin based mm -hmm. in that sense that we do. And he actually, he changes his posture and he becomes a loser. You give him serotonin, he postures up like he won again, like he's far more aggressive. Posturing is a thing. Yep. But it didn't make him a better fighter. Exactly. <laughs> he still sucks. You know what makes him a better fighter? Size of his claws, his training, not in the case of yep. the lobster, but his capacity to fight, all that stuff. Serotonin didn't change that. So, now he's posturing all aggressive. Guess what? He's going to go back out there so and he's going to get his head. ass kicked it's, again. It's exactly. Yeah. Right. So, you know what happens if you give serotonin to the beta males? He's going to have his dick swinging to yeah. the alpha male and say, hey, what's up? And he's going to get eaten for lunch. Exactly. Yeah. And then he's going to get fucking either destroyed or killed. Yeah. Because brain serotonin does not make you a better fighter. Yeah. So, you know what produces brain serotonin? Dominance. Yeah. Dominance. So, why does an alpha male produce brain serotonin, right? Because that's the key. Why is dominance producing brain serotonin? Because people are, are saying, uh, so let me look at it a different way. What does brain serotonin also does, for example, on human? It kills territorial aggression, mm -hmm. right? But so that's weird because the alpha male suddenly has a substance in him that kills territorial aggression. You would think it'd be the other way, mm -hmm. but no, because, and when do you see brain serotonin produced during acute stress? So that's weird because you would think being under, and so that's how it works. What happens during acute stress? You're spending an innate amount of energy during acute stress to fight. That's a flight mode. Mm -hmm. For humans, you produce cortisol, which liquefies everything to give you energy and everything. There has to be a way to stop all that stuff from happening because otherwise you would die from spending too much energy. Yeah. This is something we talk about all the time called the freeze mode. Mm -hmm. It's literally, there's a part of your nervous system through the dorsal vagus nerve, which is a cranial nerve, that is in charge of not letting you spend that much energy because it can be destructive to other functions. Yeah. Right. The brain serotonin is a dampening of that. When acute stress raises, then you're going to have that brain serotonin that is right there just to shut the acute straight off before it reaches levels so that are not so just high. Burning up a bunch of energy on something that maybe can't be managed at that moment. Exactly. Or... So right. So you have a beta male. <coughs> Does a beta male need aggression? Fuck yeah, because he's trying to aim for dominance for the top. He needs the aggression to get there. So he has less serotonin. But what happens when he gets there? L life has two faces: expansion and consolidation. Mm -hmm. Right. A beta male is an expansion phase. He's looking around, going like, I need to get to the top. Yeah. So aggression leaves them there. Better, stronger, more... All that stuff, yeah. Me yeah, yeah, spending yeah. a lot of energy doing yeah. that, by the way. It gets to alpha male. Is that aggressivity serving a purpose anymore? No, yeah. that's not what good leaders are. So what he needs to do now is he needs to consolidate, right? He needs to become that calm leader and stuff, because now he has to lead mm -hmm. and all that stuff, right? To do that, that aggression, that energy that he spent to get there is not the right way to go anymore. So what does he do? He dampens 
all that stuff to allow other pathways to be created to become a leader on alpha male. And that's when the brain serotonin comes in. It's a dampening system, and that's what you see being released in acute stress, right? But also in the lobster, also because it allows you to in dampen of a, the some, system. Well, in moments of some sort of a, a, a victory, some sort of dominance. Right, it, it all right. makes sense. Then. Once you have dominance, that means you have reached the you know the top, the apex mm -hmm. of the stuff. That's complexity to its max. Expansion yeah. is down. Now you start to enter the consolidation. Consolidation does not require the same level of aggressivity. On the contrary, a leader that stays that aggressive is a Will tyrant a always leader, gets, yeah. yeah, but then he gets removed. Yeah. So that's what you see alpha male. So you see that in fried boys, the, the top of the hip has more brain serotonin than the bottom. But you see some monkeys where actually it's the opposite, where the top of the, has, has less serotonin. Why? Because those are structured of society that require more fighting at the top than others. Yeah, if so someone's always that, coming for you, Right. It's not then aggressivity. So, yeah. in, so it's that, that's why it's fascinating. Safety, security. Right. Honestly. But that's why I found it fascinating because uh, I looked at the brain serotonin. You could see basically the opposite in two different types of monkeys. Yes, but that one monkey at the society based on when you are at the top, everybody's gunning for you. Yeah. The other one, once once you are at the top, you are at the top. Fat boys. Once you are at the top, there's rules in place. No mm -hmm. one touches you. Yeah. So they can have more brain serotonin. If you're in a structure that requires you to have more aggressiveness at the top because everybody's going for you, then you'll have less brain serotonin. So that shows you that they link correctly brain serotonin and aggressivity, but they're making sound aggressivity as a bad thing, and they're making sound like the brain serotonin is your savior. It depends on the fucking yeah. situation. And that's it, is, is like, I, I don't want to say that territorial aggressivity is good, but it's not bad either. But it's not bad. Yeah, it and depends neither, on the situation. Neither is brain serotonin. So, 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 so to say like right. serotonin's good because it reduces territorial. It's like, well, it depends on what's needed of me at that right. moment. Because like, that's the that's the know? stuff they make about depression. They're like, yeah, but if you have brain serotonin, you'll be less aggressive. But what if you fucking hate your life? Yeah. You're not supposed to be less meaning aggressive. At, I want at, you more aggressive. At that moment, you're with emotional balance. Is that? that uh, intensity of the emotion should rise and rise and rise and rise and to rise make you to change. beget change. Yes, yeah. to become, exactly. Yeah. Why would we dampen that outside of making people compliant in the system to go back to the factory setting? Yeah. You know, to go, literally to take you back to factory. So the idea that brain serotonin is good, that's a convergent mindset. Yeah. That's, a, sorry, that fucking objective mindset. There's no good or bad. There's better or worse, but there's never good or bad. Brain serotonin is good. It depends on the situation. Like, again, if he kills territorial aggression, if he kills aggression, do I want to kill brain serotonin when, when I train then? Because I want my aggression when I yeah, train. And I if you train hard that. enough, fuck no. I, of course, because that's going to kill. That means territorial aggression is a definition of the fight mode. Yeah. By the way. Right. So that means that you kill territorial aggression. Why would I want that? Not if you want to train in the way that we're right. talking about. Where you, where and you by the way, need, I have all the studies on yeah, this. Where, and where, yeah. you, where you need, like we've talked about yeah. lately, you need that fight mode. You need, you that need intensity. You need yeah, a high right. sympathetic response to get muscle gain, fat loss, right. quality digestion and sleep if that's not expressed. you right. know. By the way, speaking of that, there's a link between the fight mode and the production of testosterone. Mm -hmm. Right. So if brain serotonin lowers the fight mode, then you will have effects on the production of testosterone as well. Yeah. So who talks about having carbs all the time. People that have artificial means of testosterone. Mm -hmm. Often, yeah. And then Look people, at the guys, you know what I'm talking about. And then people yeah. taking advice from them. Exactly, right. You know. But maybe they don't have an issue, for example, then, then I'm going to explain why carbs in that case could lead to a dampening of the signals, dampening of the fight mode. That could actually lower your testosterone. I don't mm -hmm. know about that because we haven't known the studies, but I would love to do the studies. But who tells you Carbs for training is great. That's bodybuilding that already take testosterone. Mm -hmm. What if for people that are natural, that's actually a bad idea? Yeah. Right? Because the people that defend like the brain serotonin stuff, if you look, they either don't train or they take, uh, they take testosterone on the side. Because mm -hmm. me, I, I, I can, uh, testing the difference, I can, I can totally tell that I don't want that. And we went training. into, did we go into the carbs connection to serotonin no, last No, we're going to get there. Too. Okay. Because I have to explain how we produce brain serotonin. But that was my point about it. It's like, so brain serotonin act as a dampening agent. So when do you see it? You see it on acute stress. You see it, for example, in a case of dominance, but it's the same thing. Like, there, there was an article I was sent with, it was saying like um, brain serotonin increases, uh, increase, uh, also leads you to dominance. 
And like, no, yeah. posturing does not lead me to dominance. Posturing gets me, gets me my ass kicked. Yeah. Or at the very least, it'll get you in the fight that you better have the tools to win. Right, so, you know? but and increasing brain serotonin does not increase your, your, your skill as a fighter tool set. at all. Yeah. You know what increases your tool set? Behavior, yeah. training, all that stuff. So that's the problem is, uh, and we, we're gonna get into that because there's different ways to create brain serotonin, but the idea that increasing brain serotonin leads to dominance is the wrong way of looking at causality. It's yeah. the other way. Dominance increases brain serotonin, not the other way around. And I think that's the core of the issue right there. Objective mind, mindset means people think, oh, all, all I gotta do is to increase brain serotonin. No, you'll be able to posture, you'll be able to feel better. But the world hasn't changed. Yeah. You know how the world changed? Through behavior, never through nutrition. That just you're just changing the way you feel, and so that's the problem. Yeah. So I think fundamentally, people misunderstand what brain serotonin. Is. It's a dampening agent. It dampens the signal. So whatever the sympathetic kicks in, it brings it down, right? Because sometimes, and by the way, sometimes it's necessary. So should you increase your brain serotonin? Sometimes. Should it be done through nutrition? No. Should be done through behavior. You know what? So behavior. What kind of behavior uh, increases brain serotonin? Light actually has been mm -hmm. shown to do that. So light have a power of, is a powerful mood regulator because it blocks the reuptake. There's no, uh, no, numerous yeah. reasons for that. Um, there's um, sleep, obviously. Like, uh, so uh, chronic levels of stress will not have the same effect on brain serotonin that acute stress does. How funny is that? Interesting. Right? Yeah, yeah, because it's not, because behavior-wise, acute and chronic stress is not the same. Mm -hmm. One where you need low serotonin with chronic stress because you need to fucking change your life. That's why it's chronic stress, because it's a pattern that it just keeps happening that you need to change. Yeah. So the learning rug has to stay high. Acute stress, you if it goes it. too far, you need, <laughs> you need to break. So um, to me, brain serotonin is, a, is an agent of freeze. Mm -hmm. It's an agent of homeostasis. Freeze is being used all the time for homeostasis. When you start to, sp to spend too much energy, like shut it down. Shut it's it down, okay. because to you're gonna start, yeah, exactly, because you're gonna start taking the energy away from stuff we need. So brain serotonin is an agent of freeze. Right, so does it make you feel better? In certain situations, but it can also That's dampen. That's the question, should you be feeling better? Have you earned it? it exactly. Right. You know. Um, right, so how do we produce it? How do we produce right. it? Right, so the fuel, right, what they call the substrate, uh, for brain serotonin is tryptophan, mm -hmm. which is an amino acid. Um, it's the amino acid has to cross the brain, the brain, the blood brain barrier in order to get to the brain where in the RAF node it's going to be turned into uh, brain serotonin. The serotonin that is produced in the gut cannot go through the brain, the, brain, ugh, the blood brain barrier. It's the worst Fuck. three words for, for a French, French. Wor for a French dude to say. <laughs> Actually, there could be R's in it, which would be worse, but still, it's not, it's not easy. Um, so the key is a tryptophan. Uh, going through the, the blood-brain barrier. Right, there's a problem. The tryptophan is a weakest amino acid when it comes to that. If any other amino acids, and there's a lot of them, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, I, I'm not gonna tell the number because I don't remember exactly. So 11. I think it was 24. Oh, I no, that I'm up. probably wrong too. My 11 I made up. No, yeah, mine too, probably. <laughs> I'm not gonna say many because I don't remember. I think 24, anyway. Um, it loses, uh, so, there's a small gate, yep. right? And basically all the other amino acids win. Are gonna bully their way in. Yeah, so that's why um, there's a lot of protein-based food that have tryptophan in it, but because like Turkey, mm -hmm. well, let's say Turkey increases brain serotonin. Unfortunately, it doesn't, because there's so many other amino acids in Turkey, because it's a, it's a yeah. protein, that when it gets there, everybody's gonna go through before the tryptophan. Mm -hmm. So it's not going through. That's why it doesn't increase brain serotonin. So, there are only specific situations where that tryptophan could enter. It can enter basically when it's the only one at the gate. So you could ingest purified tryptophan with nothing else and then it could actually enter because nobody at the gates. Yeah. Or you could have a system that takes all the amino acids away from the gate to somewhere else so that the tryptophan can go through. And that happens to be one, which is insulin. An insulin spike requires all the amino acids to go toward uh, the muscle to rebuild the damage that was done, for example, or stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? And leaving the tryptophan to go through the gate by himself, and then he can produce brain serotonin. But that shows you that nature found that nutrition is a very, very poor way of getting tryptophan to the brain. Yeah. That is the... the, the so... 
that literally it's just there's no easy way there's no no it's like, so when it shows you like nutrition is not the proper by the way out of all that tryptophan that goes in a very little percentage actually is transformed into brain serotonin so the brain serotonin synthesization is actually very very efficient and uh, it needs actually very very small quantity there and then behavior allows for a better synthesization of that the idea that you can use nutrition to force feed the brain tryptophan in order to create a brain serotonin response goes against what nature is telling you how it should be done. Nature has 10 different ways through behavior mm -hmm. to increase uh, tryptophan synthesization to brain serotonin and one fucking pathway to get the fuel there, the substrate there. And most of that tryptophan is not for that anyway. Yeah. So no matter what, if you shove tryptophan in, you're going to have other stuff happening left and right that doesn't that never is been taken into consideration when we talk about brain serotonin. Yeah. So the whole thing is telling you nutrition is, is, is a very improper way. So that's why carbs, even if they don't have um, carbs, even if they, if they don't have uh, tryptophan in it, will uh, increase the, the brain serotonin concentration because the insulin spike that the carbs create allow to pull all the other amino acids away. Mm -hmm. Right, but first of all, there's a price to pay with carbs, which means you jack up the sympathetic reaction. The cost it's, becomes sleep. It's essentially, like we talked about before, right. it's almost like stimulant use at some point. It's a stimulant. Carbs are a stimulant. <coughs> it actually affects the, the sympathetic nervous system. It's a stimulant. But because the brain serotonin is, is programmed where Sorry, part of the brain, the RAF node, where the circadian rhythms are associated with mm -hmm. circadian rhythms, always associated, I don't want to run into causation, means you can put someone to sleep like that. Yeah. Remember, it's a dampening system. So you're like all high, like you're here, and then uh, it makes you fall yeah. apart. So what if that's the reason you crash after sugar? Mm -hmm. Because you get a massive insulin spike, you get tryptophan into the brain, cir um, circadian rhythm kick in, puts yeah. you to sleep. Right, I, it would have to be tested, but suddenly, maybe it's not, we say it's a blood sugar crashing. Might not be that simple. Yeah, yeah. Might, might not be, be that a simple. lot of things happening. Right. And I always thought that the, the, the crashing of the sugar was a freeze mode moment. Mm -hmm. I think that's why. I think brain serotonin is an agent of freeze. So anyway, you have the carbs even without tryptophan, and it basically activates, it starts with the part of the brain, actually, with circadian rhythm, it could put you to sleep. But that's not the question. The question is, are you not going to sleep? The question is, do you have a full night's sleep? Do you have a night of quality sleep? Did you have your deep sleep, your REM sleep? Did... That's the true question instead of, oh, we're just going to put you to sleep. But put you to sleep, I can choke you out. I'll put yeah. you to sleep too. You'll yeah. wake up probably. Wake... But even if you... So we tra we're treating brain serotonin like it's a sleeping pill. Mm -hmm. But why are we always dealing with what is a behavior issues with either a food or a pill. We have to stop substituting nutrition. It's like you said, for it's, behavior. it's that convergent mindset. Behavior for nutrition. No, it's the, it's nutrition that for convergent behavior. mindset that yes, exactly. immediately has to right. reduce everything right. down, which is why you bring up anything, like we've noticed, you bring up something about maybe you don't need to be fucking with this many carbs. I don't yeah. know, maybe you should try it without yeah. all these and carbs the, yeah. and the solution is well what about brain serotonin and it's like exactly whoa I, what about brain serotonin what about it what you about know, it like, like what are you saying and and right. so it just never that, that, that thing yeah. never went anywhere because they're not saying anything that's the thing so you know what a convergent mindset does is behavior is that complex of yeah. an issue right but brain serotonin is that small oh, i'm going to go to the smaller well, one then. and it gives you much less to be responsible for that too you know. and it gives you a trick because if also if i tell you you shouldn't have carbs for a month and your response is to fucking flip out and argue about how yeah. you're not it's like all right <laughs> well but, i you, you, you like you said we have this entire behavioral thing that's presented in front of you and you can't navigate your way through your normal behaviors in a month without having right to have exactly to boil, but like, like if this was out if you remove carbs you would put 100 percent of your problems on the fact that you weren't taking carbs that whole time you'd be like oh fuck. and it's like and and so you're just looking for that one thing yep. and so that's you found one reason you want to hang on to your carbs which is not the reason because you've never felt you nobody knows what like it feels like to all of a sudden now it's oh that's the serotonin you don't fucking know yeah, what that exactly. is yeah exactly so like so yeah you feel a little i don't know that the whole thing seems unscientific and fucking 
Like a big fat excuse, yeah, you mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah exactly. It's just an excuse. That's all it is. But like, because look at the. Let's talk about sleep and dominance. Yeah. Two important subjects, right? Let's say glucids put you to sleep of that. But basically, to go to sleep, what you've done is you fuck with your circadian rhythm. So first of all, is that good sleep, right? With deep and and second of all, you fucking with your circadian rhythm. You think there's no price to pay for that, yeah. right? So then third point is why are you not sleeping well in the first place? That might be that big of a problem because your behavior is, by the way, stimulants during the day, yeah. too much coffee, uh, too much booze. You fucking hate your life. You're stressed out. You da 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 da. Yeah. Tricking you into sleeping might work for one night, but that's all this is. It's a trick. And you, by the way, there's a price to pay for that trick as well. And, but you can't think, oh yeah, it worked, that's it, I'm done. No, that we're going back to antidepressant where I'm an eight instead of a 10, so I'm better, everything is cool, right? It's just, there's a number of, beha- if you start to do that thinking like, I'm just gonna basically crash myself, go my, freeze myself into sleeping, yeah. you're not acknowledging the massive amount of behavior that needs to change for you to be able to sleep. And even if we look at nutrition, that you're, you can ignore the fact that you have carbs, that you have caffeine, that you have sugar, and you have all that, because you found a way to crash yourself. That means that now you open the door to do whatever the fuck you want during the day yeah. and not pay the price for it and think. You're not paying the price yeah. for it. Of it's course a, you it's are. It's a much less severe version of just drinking yourself to sleep every night. <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? yeah, like, yeah, but guess what? You're the lobster who's posturing now. Yeah. But you're still gonna get your ass kicked. Yeah. So you what? You're gonna have carbs every night, but at some point, getting, like the body doesn't like getting like, pumping. like m- minus two hours of good sleep, less than what you should be getting oh. every night. There's a fucking storm coming. You know what I mean? Like it's whatever. Run all you want, but it's coming. And, and by the way, and up. again, you're killing the fight mode every time you do that. You think you don't? Do you think that's you're not gonna yeah. pay the price for that? Yeah. It's like, and again, like all the shit that you do during the day that now you're, you're kind of getting away with, you think you're not going to pay a price for that mm-hmm. either. It's a massive complex issue that you're allowing yourself to basically going into a rejectionist mindset so they can sell you something. Plus the risk of having your fight capacity diminished over that time. That alone should tell you not to do that it. That alone is bad, but, but also talk about what that can do for injury risk, for Christ's sake. The moment when your basic level of arousal if you will into yeah. an exercise the what you are bringing to it is at 100 percent or whatever and that 100 percent now is much less than it was a year ago because of all of this stuff this lack of recovery yeah. but speaking of that um happiness what if brain serotonin dampens happiness because remember the only way we're looking at it is to dysfunction depressed mm-hmm. people and we're only looking at less dysfunctional right and we view that as more happy but we look at yeah but because we look at depressed people yeah. but what if we were to give uh, antidepressant to really happy people. Okay, what is one of the problem, like going back to testosterone, what's one of the problem with Prozac? You can't get your dick up anymore. Do you, do you guys know that? No. You can't get your dick up on Prozac. It cuts all, yep, <laughs> that alone should, okay, so how, how any of this is acceptable? I, yeah. I, I'm so baffled by all this. Yeah, on Prozac, you're done. Right, so how about we, if it's antidepressant, we give it to very happy people, and they should be even happier, yeah. right? Guys with perfectly good working normal boners, now they don't work. Tell no, me but, about happy. But, so <laughs> past that one, um, if you're very happy and I give you antidepressant, because you should be even damp- happier. But because it's a dampener, it's simply You'll going be less to be happy. less. Yeah. Right. So that, really but that's what this. we don't talk about, because we only look at, at depressing is better. Yeah, yeah but babe, it's being more average is not the same thing as being better. I think it's important to reiterate what you said about how it average. pulls back towards homeostasis. Exactly. What, what, what that happens, whether you're extremely happy or extremely depressed, what's going to happen is we're just, we're just going to pull it a little back towards the, the middle. Compliance. And that's interesting. Right. Yeah. yeah that's, but that's, who wants that? Yeah. Right. So that's the problem. So now, like, I don't want, so that's my my test that I did with the nuts and everything, where I, um, I had a few nuts, like 10, 15 um, Brazilian nuts and everything, and my sea level of energy went down suddenly. I was ca- kind of curious because I was making the argument for the last two days, so I was like, let me try this. I did it yesterday. Two things. First of all, my sea, I, I felt not depressed, but less of, of my sea energy level, so I was like, I don't like it. I went straight to the gym, couldn't get my heart rate under 120, on the optical machine at four, which is nothing, then couldn't get my heart rate under 100 on a fucking bicycle at one. 
mm-hmm. barely pedaling. Why? Because the carbs acted as a stimulant, so it goes to the heart, sense of self, everything. But on top of it, brain serotonin mellowed me down, and I don't want that. Yeah. I'm extremely, I'm extremely hyper. My learning rate is through the roof. I don't want to dampen the motherfucker. Yeah. I don't want that. I want I, so that's why, like the carbs, I'm staying off. So that idea that brain serotonin is good is complete bullshit. It depends on when. Mm-hmm. Talking about dominance, dominance requires what? It is such a complex stuff. Yeah. Right. The idea that brain serotonin. Uh, increases dominance is the stupidest idea ever. What fucking metric are they using for dominance? Short of right when we're talking about people. What no, the but, fuck? okay. So dominance. You know? Let's say uh, you're gonna me if I get brain serotonin, I walk in the cage. I'm gonna beat the guy in front of me. That suddenly there's two forms of dominance: the physical and neurological one. Mm-hmm. So you have one what is expansion. I need aggression. I need to fight. I need to win. And then there's consolida- consolidation and everything. Brain serotonin can help in consolidation because it can calm you down, so you can think, learn better, and everything. But when is when? Emotional violence means you cannot learn without the, a strong emotion. Why would I want to dampen? Strong emotion since I'm gonna diminish my learning rate. So we really want then essentially like so the they're saying dominance uh, serotonin that's that's totally right. correlation. There's no causation in that as far yeah. as what we're saying. No, and yeah. so causation is the other way. Yeah, yeah. So, dominance causes. But so that that's the key, yeah. right? It's like so you you're not gonna get serotonin and achieve dominance, whatever that is in your space. No, but if you achieve doing, dominance, then you're, you're gonna get when yeah. serotonin. You know what the difference is. One was achieved through behavior. Action. Yeah. One was behavior. The other one was nutrition. Yeah. And that's the core. Of what I'm trying to explain is, yes, you should increase your brain serotonin through action, mm-hmm. because behavior, because you want more brain serotonin, achieve dominance in your field, study, move, well, do better. And, and, and dominance means getting better, not not achieving the top. And that's where we say here when we're saying that, like you know, brain serotonin. We're not saying it's bad. We're not saying it's good. No. But we are saying that a misplaced boost in brain serotonin fuck me there's consequences yes yes and and it's just like i think i think anything that can be uh perceived as a reward if you will can, yep. can be that way you know what i mean like right. like we just buy your kids fucking whatever they want all the time and see if your kid grows up to be an asshole they probably will be. yes you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, exactly yeah so you can't Behavior just reward matters. reward yes. reward like you need a, a, a kid a, a, a good dog doesn't just Fucking yeah. get up and get a treat. That dog yeah. wants to do yeah, something pee on the outside. that it yeah. feels yeah. appreciated exactly. for. It yeah. gets to sit, it learns the tricks, mm-hmm. gets the thing. That's, that's, that's what yeah. a dog wants to do. Yeah. The dog doesn't just want to go get the treat and walk away. Yeah. I learned that, actually, this is an interesting thing. With my dog, he likes ice cubes. He'll puke up any other fucking snack we give him. Yeah. Ice cubes he can do. And he loves them. But when my wife was gone for a few months, I just like was... Like here, it's fucking ice, and I would give him two, three of them. Well, she would do this thing where she would have him do this whole routine. It rested on his nose, and yeah. he would get excited about that. Yeah. He loved ice cubes. Exactly. Yeah, the ritual. Couple months with me, he's got the ice cube. I'm like, go away. He doesn't you know? give a shit. Well, he never gave a fuck about the ice cube after yeah, a couple yeah. months. His favorite thing yeah. was nothing to yeah. him because yeah, there was, was no ritual. action. Yeah, exactly. There was it's no. Behavior. This is a thing that I got it's that behavior. I did good. Exactly, at. it's yeah. behavior, and I think that's the most dangerous thing we do. Everything we do now goes through food or pill. Mm-hmm. Like we cannot create anything anymore through behavior. Every time people talk testosterone, don't change your behavior, inject testosterone. But that means that your body won't produce the testosterone. Yeah. So that means that you're hooked mm-hmm. on it forever. Guys, when they start on TRT, they're fucked. Yeah, you will take it the rest of your life. Yeah. Right, because imagine how hard it would be to bring it. You could, but man, is it going to be hard. Yeah. It's going to take a long time too. So. You know what I mean? So now you want more brain, brain serotonin for what? Why is it not there in the first place? Go achieve dominance. What dominance just means go get better. Yeah. It doesn't mean go dominate someone. It's the just two very it's a learning rate. Yeah, yeah it's, it could be, but not necessarily. Dominance just means you're getting better. Mm-hmm. That's why the learning process takes away um, depression and anxiety in that sense because you're achieving dominance, you're learning, you're increasing the complexity of your system, which is what life and evolution really wants you to do anyway. But uh, um, that's the idea, is you just moving the stuff forward. But let's do it through behavior. This, we have to stop doing it through food and pill. Yeah. What, what you, there's a difference between nutrition and behavior. And I think that that line is being crossed way too much in order to sell people stuff. Yeah. The pharmaceutical industry sells pills that, in so, that that, that is there instead of behavior and the fitness industry paths, and the, the fitness, fitness industry, industry sells food where instead of 
be, uh, changing behavior. So those life hack bullshit stuff, if at least you're talking about life hack your, your life through behavior, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you because those things, I think, make a difference. Yeah. We have to stop doing it through food and pills. That's the key. Like your lower back hurts, you take painkillers. Guess what happens? We know. You turn to heroin. You yeah. die of overdose. You or at best, your lower back doesn't get any better. Any better. And it gets worse yeah. because, and guess what? Now you're moving like there is no problem. So imagine if you have a tendinitis, right? Uh, and if I, use, if I use pain and injury, people will understand far more than when I use, which I find mm -hmm. very interesting. Imagine you have pain because of an improper movement pattern. Faulty movement pattern, you're pressing incorrectly. That starts to give you pain in your elbow, you start to have a tendinitis, right? That tendinitis eventually is gonna turn into a rupture of a tendon or some, something like that, right? What do you need to do? You need to move correctly. Yeah. What if I give you a painkiller? Right, so that means that's gonna allow you to keep moving incorrectly even more often, which will result eventually in a major injury. Taking away the pain, the tendinitis, is not taking away the faulty movement pattern. It's not taking away the injury that is coming. Yeah. Right, so the painkiller has been has substituted the stuff that you should get from behavior. The amount of people that I, even in a small town, that I'd know who would get any injury and they would get basically yep. painkiller injections and with a back injury, it's like, you're coming back in my fucking gym to train after this and you're not, right. you're, like, I kind of want you to have some of those pain signals because they exist for a reason and let's work with what doesn't hurt and let's progress those signals away exactly. until we've won this fight. Instead, you take this sh shot now from the doctor and you come in all cockstrong and you fucking fuck your back up again. And, and now, now worse, now worse. And now so we have, to, yeah. we have to all agree there's a difference between you getting a car accident and you broke a bone. Yeah. You reset the bone, you take painkillers. Well, yes, I, I'm all for it. Yeah. But you come at me with a faulty movement pattern and you're in pain. No, you can't take painkillers yeah. because then you'll never change the problem. Yeah. Right, so that, that approach that I think people understand, you have to understand that the same is being done to you with nutrition. Mm -hmm. You are using stimulants because you don't have passion for, for the stuff. And on the other side of it is we have, you know, we have what we've talked about with uh, medicine, pharmaceuticals, and the health and fitness industry that is pushing things this specific way with this very objective-based convergent mindset um, as a solution, if you will, or, to, or for the betterment. Right. But on the other side of it, you also have the, the food industry, the restaurant yes. industry, that is, that is very much has a lot at stake in people getting behavior yeah. and food yeah. mixed up. Because they have a lot at stake for you, yeah. like being like, oh, I feel happy, let's go Eat some pizza. Oh, I yeah, feel exactly. sad. Let's go do this. Or oh, right. oh, I should do this. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's just go right. eat. So and... yeah, because that means what? That means any insulin spike allows you to feel less shitty about your life. So that means people have lives they don't like. So let's say you have a very repetitive job, like especially either mentally or physically and everything. You at the end of the day, you feel like shit because you don't the same stuff for eight hours and everything. Mm -hmm. You would give anything to feel less bad. All I gotta do is create an insulin spike. Here, here's some carbs and sugar. Yeah. Insulin spike, oh, I feel better. No, you just feel less shitty about your life. Yeah. Right, which is, can be very tempting, right? But, and I, I don't fault individuals for being tempted by that, but when you have an entire system, an entire society that now is building a model where, don't worry, we got something for that. Do you guys understand where we're going with this? Where we're going is we're gonna GMO the fuck out of every food and put Prozac in it. Yeah. That's where we're going. Yeah. Like, let's put Prozac in every food so that no one feels bad. That's where we're going with this shit. And that's where the, nutri in, in a roundabout way, that's where the nutrition industry is pushing a way to fix your behavior through nutrition. All they're doing, they're not giving you the skill to get better, they're just giving you, making you feel better about it. Yeah. And that's where the serotonin comes in. It's a dampening system. It's a freeze mode. So this, this big takeaway from today, as I look through all of this for an application thing, I don't have any on the ground thing short of mm. like, you need to maybe like be a little more mindful of what decisions you're making should be action based and not food based. Well, yes, like, exactly. That seems like that seems to be the root totally. where we need to start. But, and I think that's the base of the strong food And I also problem. think it starts with, we talked about this a little bit, how when people then start chasing that serotonin first, mm -hmm. it essentially, with food and anything that's not behavior, it starts to mimic 
drug abuse, the, totally. the, the escalation, totally. the yeah, sequ- exactly. all that stuff. So I think in this case, you don't often treat drug addicts while they're still using. And so I think like we've talked about, right, it's right. one of the benefits of No yeah. Fix November is that like, all right, so it's, it may get worse for it gets better. It may you may get more angry. You may be more tired. You may be, but that's, that's the worse. point. Yeah, that's the point. Drop the that's shit. Not worse. Yeah. Put the shit down. And I, I then think let's the, see what you the biggest thing you can do for your life is separating nutrition and behavior, food, pills, and behavior. Like you have to know where each fit. There's a place for painkillers, but it's not for every pain. There's a place for nutrition. It's not for every problem. There are certain things that you need to change through behavior. Do not let them sell you food or pill for that. Stop using food or pills to make you feel better about situation. You are supposed to change. Do you want to drop that mic or do I? Exactly. That's pretty good. <laughs> so, um, well, I think that's a good point to wrap up. We got through everything. I think that's, I think that's the most yeah. important part. And that's something I'm very passionate about because I believe it's the true nature of a lot of ills that I see. That's been at the basis of, it's actually yeah. been, it's, it's been like in the base of all the nutrition stuff that you've yeah. been working on anyways. It's always pointed towards that. Behavior. We've brought up food and behavior right. before. And so people um, are always surprised because they go like, but like, you're not adding this. I'm like, actually I'm taking away. Yeah. Not in a deprive yourself kind of way, but I'm really, what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm taking your nutrition fixes away. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's got us wrapped up today? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's a good one. That was good. I, I, uh, I, I, wanted... I say what I wanted to say, so I'm happy good. with that one. Good, This was, actually, was on target. This was the most on maps we've had to do in the long... on one. Yeah, because because normally such... we can actually hit, like, we need point A, point B, and point C, yeah. and we work our way yeah. through. Whereas here, we had to make sure, there was actually a lot of points we had to cover. Right, and then the, the trip to fun and everything, because yeah. you, you, the reason we cover it like this is because there's so many guys out there that are covering the brain serotonin as a excuse to have carbs. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the guys on the traffic community, I'm talking about top people, some of them out of a famous uh, online newspaper um, that are using it as a way to promote carbs as saying like it'll allow you to sleep at night and stuff yeah. like that. I don't understand why there's a pro-carb and pro-fat faction going on. People need war for everything. Everybody needs Like I'm not, you know what I mean? Like like I've I've told people have carbs when you train. By the way, if you have carbs when you train, um, you're gonna have to be careful because if you have too much of a insulin spike, brain serotonin comes in again and that might not, that's, uh, you're gonna have a problem. So if you train hard enough, the insulin spike won't happen. Mm-hmm. Because uh, acute, you know, like with the, that kind of a stress of a high training session, it will block the insulin spike. But if the sugar wins, then your training will be shit. So that's why you see some people yeah. have sugar when they train, they still crash. Yeah. So if your fight mode is high enough, the insulin spike won't cause a massive amount of brain serotonin because you won't have a big enough insulin spike to do that. But if your training is not good enough, then the insulin spike will win. Yeah. And now you have brain serotonin, which kills the fight mode. So you either, you're going to go either way <laughs> with the sugar. So that's why I like carbolin better, especially not that I do it anymore, but back then, because it was like rice and stuff like that. So the insulin spike was less. So with a hard training session, it would bring everything down and I would, I would still keep my fight mode. So you're going to have to be careful about how much sugar you get in your training session, because at some point the insulin spike is going to take the fight, mo- yeah, and it will take the fight mode away. Yeah, and that doesn't mean also that that fight mode's not going to be there for you at that moment either. It means it's just not going to be you, which means then gradually it becomes less right. and less. Right. Okay, so that's the yeah. second problem too: yeah. is you by using the sugar on the carbs, you are triggering a sympathetic reaction, right? Yeah. A fight mode that can be counterbalanced if you have too much of it. So it's a balance. But even if it's a balance, as you said, it's not you. So that means if it's not you, that means you're not producing it. But more importantly, you're not learning to produce it. You're not progressing. In progressing. That, yeah. Eventually, that's going to run into a problem. Yeah. So I think like uh, it, I'm not expecting people to do it in, in 16 weeks, but it took me 16 months to get there. But I think it's a goal that at some point you are able to do your life with no stimulants, no fixes whatsoever. No carbs, no sugar, no caffeine, no How nothing. you want, doing what you want, being, being you. who you want to be. Being yeah. who you want to be, being you. To be you, you need to remove all those outside sources because, again, it's not that you're weak mentally, it's just they affect, for example, they affect the heart and the heart goes straight to the sense of self. There is no conscious decision that you can take that anywhere blocks any of that from happening. 
those stimulants go straight to the heart, the heart goes straight to the social brain and the test negative network and there's nothing you can do about that. There is no amount of rational thought that you can have for the mindset growth stuff and everything mm -hmm. that will change that fact. So when you start pummeling the heart, you're pummeling your sense of self. And that is separate from the conscious rational thoughts that you can have. So there's a danger there. I think the best thing to wrap would be to, you better check your sense of self before you wreck yourself. Yes. I like it. As soon as I heard that, I was like, I gotta hang on to that I like one. it. I All like right, it. anyway. Uh, so <laughs> you can get everything else at strongfit.com. That's a post for Instagram tomorrow. Oh, fuck. All right. I like it. Oh, it's so good. No, no, I like it. Or do we get to say it before you riggedy wreck yourself, or are we going to keep no, it No, 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 just put it like this. Okay. You should check your sense of self before, <laughs> before you, you wreck, wreck yourself. yourself. I think it's awesome. Um, strongfit.com's got all the seminars. So uh, the seminars, the workshops, Coaches Week, are all going to be there. Uh, strongfitequipment.com, n.eu, sandbags, shirts, that shirt. Um, this is his favorite part. Uh, the this guy here is Strongfit One on Instagram, Tyler F and So on Instagram. We have Rare Barracuda, UK32. We've got podcast at strongfit.com for the podcast support page, and the Strongfit this is community what, on Facebook, way. and JuliansCorner.com. I'm just trying to get. These I finally. People. There's, listen, like, there, there's only like one segment of this that involves any way that they can give you money at all yeah, for yeah. anything that you do. And as soon as I go to that, Julian's like. Can we just skip this? I've just, I've just listened to the Jorgen <laughs> podcast. For the, I was always watching on YouTube. I actually listened to it. He has fucking four minutes of commercial at the beginning. I it's, did not know that. Sometimes it's almost 20. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. It's actually, as a matter of fact, I think that's changed in the last year on Rogan because his platform has gotten so big to where he doesn't have to do this 15, 20 minute shit in the mm -hmm. beginning like he used to, because now for four minutes he can charge what he used to charge for 20. But that's insane. It's crazy. We will never do that. No, no, no. I skip. I will if you, you said I'll, $500,000 an episode, you're gonna have half okay, the episode. Yeah, exactly, no. <laughs> okay, 100,000 buys you, I'll go with four minutes. <laughs> four minutes, deal. Um, the, but I skip them anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't get it. And then, you know there's that button The worst, go like this? And the worst thing that podcasts do is the ones that are kind of comedy podcasts. They'll do ad reads in the middle, which I also, no, under no, which no, I also no, understand no, from a business standpoint. No. But not for us. What cast but did it, but yeah. what's funny, when they do them in the middle, when they drop them in, if you're going to do that, you need to just have a pre-recorded thing that you cut in for 30 seconds and yeah. get out. And I've seen ones where they sit in there and they do an ad read and they kind of fuck around and try to make it funny. But the problem is the whole thing's kind of skippable because yeah. I don't need to care about online yeah. gambling websites. We will never And then, that. but it's 20 minutes of an hour podcast. I'm kind of riffing on it. And I'm like, the you just ruined to do that. And no, no, yeah. no, like, you, you know, like that old way of doing business. What I find very interesting is this is like the commercial in the US where every seven minutes of a movie of a commercial, right? yeah. that old school stuff. Podcast, are exactly what they told you could not work. Exactly. It's two people talking, two or three, in for three, hours, three hours. Yeah, yeah, one to three hours. Everything they told you would never work. It's not done professionally. Mm -hmm. There's no studio, there's no CGI. Thor is not shooting, you know, like, <laughs> uh, uh, he's not coming with a storm. And they, that's exactly what they told you would not work. Mm -hmm. And that's what is the number one, like, TV is dead. Yeah. It's YouTube because of podcasts. Yeah. And you can see actually what's happening with, with podcasts that, um, you know, Spotify just announced whatever, hundreds and hundreds of million dollars yes. they're putting to, towards developing their podcast platform. But you know how they're doing it? They're the late to the way. game yeah. and they have fucking, and they're, they're, I would describe as one of the innovators in the new space of how music works, right? Yeah. And they're doing fucking podcasts the old and worse way. Yes. So what they're doing, they're taking all this huge money. And they're investing it in some like, they're basically just paying celebrities yeah. to launch their own podcast and throwing a ton of money at it in high production. It's not interesting, it's not good. And it's all short form and it's yeah. expensive. And it's like, you give Lots me a guy ads. who's fucking yeah. like, just a funny guy with a dirty mind and an hour of running his mouth, don't well, give him any job. money. Yes, exactly. And yeah. that fucking shit will be way more funny than, I, I'll, I'll shit on a podcast that I thought was going to be good. There was a Ron Burgundy podcast. They hired Will Ferrell to do a podcast, like I think 30 minutes to an hour, I don't know how often, yeah. as Ron Burgundy from Anchorman. Yeah, so how can you fuck that up, right? It's just not funny. 
Yeah. And you know, maybe that format, that character doesn't work that way, but it's garbage. It's fucking trash. Yeah, I think he, he needs to have there. other people in front yeah. of him. For well, what it is, it's not a hang. And I believe that in podcasts, you can do anything you want. You can have character stuff. You can do yeah. narrative stories, short, long. But that's but like, but, but what that is, is that's like a fucking movie or a one man. Yeah. It's just a, it's a, I mean, it like, doesn't apply to this industry. It shows you exactly how a uh, corporation work is like once it's objective minds you know objective based stuff where they go like they reduction we need to get into the podcast space let's throw some money right. at and what did they do is like look we we have re- uh, we reducted all this to, we, we got a formula yeah right we took it's like scramble eggs from Gordon Ramsay yeah. this is a recipe let's just do that yeah but that's that's the objective search mindset, and it never works like yeah. that. So now they're doing it with podcasts, yeah. which I find so weird. Yeah. But anyway, no, there won't be commercials in the middle. That nope. will, I don't care how much money, you'll never do that. No, nope. we drew up them all at the end. Brought to you by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Exactly. Well, uh, we'll see you next week, guys. That's it. Bye, I, think, I think I had all the reads out. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Either way, we Whatever. we we, we at this stage. Bye. <laughs>